In this video, what we're going to do is set up our React router. And the purpose of the router is simply to control the current URL that we are at. And based upon the URL that we are at, we are going to get served different components from React router. So as you remember, in our server, currently we're serving any request that isn't a physical file in the public directory, any request, the index page, which will include our scripts and include React Router. So it's up to React Router to decide which components it's going to instantiate. So you're definitely welcome to check out the GitHub page. There is a decent amount of documentation here for basic usage, as well as a handful of examples. However, we are going to be using a fairly standard, fairly simple configuration with just a few interesting bits. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first, I am going to configure or create two files, two JavaScript files and two accompanying SAS files that each will contain two React components. So basically, every screen that we're going we're gonna to be on, be it the lobby or inside of a game, there will be two main top-level components active at a time, one for the sidebar and one for the main content. So let's go ahead and do that. Inside of components, I'm going to start off by creating my lobby.js and my lobby.scss files. For our lobby.js file, I'm going to go ahead and import the scss file lobby.scss, and I'm also going to import React. Um, and for now, I'm going to import React comma component, but we won't be using component eventually. You'll see that later. Um, so we'll re import React and component from React. Then I'm going to do class lobby container extends component, and it's going to have a render method that simply returns a paragraph saying lobby. Um, I am not exporting our lobby uh, container class directly. We'll export that at the bottom. You'll see why momentarily. Next, I'm going to do lobby sidebar extends component render return p lobby sidebar. Now to export these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say export default object. The object is going to have a main set to lobby container and a sidebar set to lobby sidebar. So we're exporting two different um, components here, but the reason we're not using the export syntax is because I wanted to export an object that maps lobby container to the main key and lobby sidebar to the sidebar key, because we're gonna be using, we're gonna be consuming this object later. Um, now let's go ahead and create our game component. So game.js and game.scss. For game, I'm uh, inside the JS file. I'm simply going to import game SCSS. Then I'm going to import React and component from React. Then I'm going to say same thing. I'm just do class game um, container. Sorry, game container extends component. We'll render out a return paragraph of game. Then we'll do a class game sidebar, which extends component and we'll re uh, render out a paragraph of game sidebar. Then we'll do the same thing down here. We will export default object, passing in main, we'll reference the game container class, or game container function, really. And the sidebar will reference the game sidebar class. So our C SCSS files are blank, but be sure to import them. Um, every single component file that we're going to create is going to have a corresponding SCSS file. And I don't want to keep on repeating it throughout this series. So always make sure that you import the corresponding SCSS file. It doesn't need to be necessarily the first import of the component of the module, but I tend to like doing that. I tend to go SCSS files followed by library files from node modules, followed by shared code between the client and server, followed by client code as far as sorting my imports. Anyway, so now we have two really basic components that are basically the exact same thing. They export a similar construct. So let's go ahead and actually hook this in together. You'll see in the, the, the documentation for React Router, the way you kind of start off with React Router is by passing in a, or starting with a router object at the top level, followed by uh, potentially an array or um, a hierarchy of these route values. And these are all in JSX, even though they don't produce markup, they are still React components. 
But we're going to break things up just a tiny bit. And the reason for that is the way we're doing hot module reloading. We're going to have the router itself be created directly in our client JS file, our top level client JS file. Then in, we're going to return, we're gonna have a function that returns the routes from our routes JS file. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we'll see with that. So if I come down here to route um, uh, client JS, where we have our main, uh, we're going to be instantiating the router object here. And then inside of the routes JS file, we're going to be returning the, the route hierarchy of where we want each URL to map to. So to start off with the client, we are going to have to do a few things. I am going to, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start at the top. And at the top, I'm going to start with uh, import, actually, I'll do that before React DOM. Import React from React. And uh, the reason we're importing React in client JS now is because to create the router, it is a React component, so we'll have to use JSX. Then I'm going to go ahead and after React DOM, I'm going to import the components from React Router that we're going to need. I'm going to do router. I'm going to do browser history as history from React Router. So the browser history object is used to manipulate, well, the history. Um, so there's different ways that we can support the back button, basically, is what I'm saying. And um, uh, the browser history will keep track of the different URL changes. We have to pass in a history object into React Router for it to work. And then, because I don't want to refer to it as browser history throughout the rest of this file, I'm changing the name of the import with the as operator, the as keyword. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch up this file just a little bit. Uh, uh, insofar as um, adding in some separators. So I'm going to start off with our main function, and we'll add a separator here. And um, I'll call it, I'll put render there. And then I'm going to take uh, this, I'm going to change it to misc. I'm going to put main down at the bottom, the, invocate, the first invocation of main. And then I'll separate that off with go. So we're going to have more sections as we add more things, like when we create our dispatchers and our stores and our services and our so socket IO connection. So I just foresee needing to make tidy this file up just a little bit. But with that all done, let's go ahead and, and include React Router into our application. So React Router requires that we instantiate a router component at the top level of our component hierarchy. So I'm going to do that route right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break this out into its own line. And then in the, for the first argument passed into renderer, I'm going to pass in router with the history of history. So we're passing the history property uh, as the object that's responsible for the browser or for for the history of our application. And that's of course is just the renamed browser history from the React router uh, uh, package. And then we'll go ahead and terminate that. And then inside of router, I'm simply going to do routes. Because these are just, because React Router and Routes and all that stuff is just React components, we can use basic JSX and just pass in whatever we got from this, uh, this Routes file. So this allows us to pass in our services at the top level while maintaining the ability for our hot reloading to pick up changes on our Routes.js file. Because no, no component internal to our application is included in this client.js file. It's only in the routes file. So with that, we can now do our routes. And our routes are actually really, really straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with, we have, we're already importing React. I'm also going to import route, index route, and redirect from React router. And these are all React components. Then um, I'm going to import app container, but I'm also going to import lobby from components lobby. So I'm importing the default export here because I'm not I'm not putting it in curly braces. I'm not using the star star syntax or anything like that. So what that's going to include, obviously, is the this object that we we are passing back as the default export. So we'll do the same thing for game. So import game from components game. Then as far as our return, so we'll return, be sure to wrap this in parentheses because I'm breaking down a line. And we're going to configure our routes. And our routes are really simple. So the first route we're going to have has a path of just forward slash. This is the root route. And I'm going to say component equals 
um, app container. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the index route. So this is a sub route. And we'll talk about that in a second here. I'm going to say index route, and I'm going to say components, not component, but components. Big difference. We'll talk about that in a second. Components equals lobby. Then I'm going to say, then I'm going to create a normal route underneath it with a path of forward slash game forward slash colon game ID. So this is the, the little DSL, little built-in routing syntax that React Router uses, very similar to other things that you might have used in, let's say, you know, Ruby on Rails or ASP.NET MVC. So what we're doing is this will match any route that has that slash game from the root followed by some variable. And that variable will be captured and accessible to us. And I'll show you how that works as well. Then, not surprisingly, I'm going to say components, not component, components equals game. And I'm going to finish this off with a redirect from star to forward slash. So let's take a look at what we just wrote and kind of break down the way that this, this these routes are going to work. Um, the main route, the top level route, will contain the app container. Now, the interesting thing about the way React Router works, now note that I do component equals app container here because we're not passing in a object that maps things. So this app container is going to be present in every single route because we can kind of see the hierarchy here. This app container is going to contain everything underneath it. It's always going to be present. It's always going to be mounted to our application. Then we have an index route. And that means that if no other route matches, once we're, once we're in the root, if no other route matches, then go ahead and use these components that were imported from the lobby. Then we do a route, we do a, a check. And the check is, are we on a URL that starts with slash game followed by a variable? If we are, then we're in the game. And finally, if none of those things match, it kind of it works in sequential order. It starts with the index route saying, if we're at the path of the parent, use these components. Then it does this route. If we're at the game path, use these components. And then if that doesn't work, then we will redirect from anything back to the start. Now, we can already start using this and taking a look at what it does. So let's go ahead and um, exit full screen there. And let's go ahead and gulp dev. Well, that's loading. I'll track down my Chrome window. So yeah, React is, is really simple to configure. It's very powerful. There are a bunch of other fun stuff, fun things you can do with it. I encourage you to check out the documentation. Um, we're going to be seeing a, a handful of different ways we can we can inter interact with the React Router API as this course progresses. But with that, I can come over here. And you'll notice nothing's really different because localhost 3000, we have no different display. But what we should be able to do now is we should be able to do slash game slash four. You'll notice we get the same output. Now let's try to go to an invalid route, hit enter, and notice how we get redirected. So that's fantastic, but we have a problem. So, so we're always getting this app container. If we look at this, a, a router inside router context, we're always getting this app container, but we're not getting our lobby components or our game components. And that's because in the way the routing works, um, at any top level container will always be present, always be instantiated. And then the child components matched based off the route will be passed in as either children uh, to the main component in the children property or as named properties based off of the object passed into the components attribute. We can actually inspect that by clicking on app container and checking out its props. Notice how there's a bunch of new props here. We have uh, location, for example. Um, let's go to a game route. That'll make this more interesting. Whoops. And remember, right now I have to reload every time I change a route because I don't have any internal links in this application. But once we do have internal links in the application, then obviously there won't be any page reloads. It'll, it, it is going to be a SPA. But anyway, inside of our app container, uh, now we have location. And location has a path name of game two. So we can access the location from this app container by accessing our props. Um, we also have params. The params contains game ID colon two, which matches this pattern right here, this variable name. Um, and then we also have the route. 
And right now it's saying that the route that the app container is responsible for is the, the, the main route, which is true. Even though we're on a, a sub route underneath it, the master route right here is the app container. And route params, uh, the router itself, which allows us to interact with React Router internally, and so on, uh, as well as routes. These are the sub routes. But we also have two components that are very interesting, main and sidebar. So main and sidebar got added in because I used the components property of that container, uh, of that route, and I passed in an object with two properties on the main and sidebar. So how do we access them? How, how do we render them out in the app? Well, it's very simple. We just access the props. So if we hop on over to our app.js file, let's go ahead and write some code. Let's go ahead and write our um, basic app. So first of all, I'm going to import main and sidebar equals this dot props. So I'm accessing those two things that were passed in uh, based off of the child route that we're on. And then inside of this, I'm just going to put in some code that we will be leaving. This isn't just um, code that I'm just putting in um, just to show you guys something. I'm going to say class name equals, and I'm going to open up a template string here and say C application. You'll see why we have a template string there later in the series. And then I'll say div class name equals inner. Inside of inner, I'll have div class name equals sidebar. And then for sidebar, just print out the Re React component. The React component is being sent in as a variable. We can just print it out directly there. And then I'm going to do div class name equals main. And then not surprisingly, I will render out, oh, stop that time this, I'll render out main. So yeah, take a look at that. That's the application. I'm just accessing these React components that were passed in from the React router. So you can here you can see it side by side that's passed into this master component. And you can nest this as much as you want. Like for example, don't, don't follow this, but um, I could say route um, path equals game ID. And then I can say inside of this route path equals like, I don't know, forward slash details or options. And then say, you know, component equals uh, game options. So you can continuously nest these into a very uh, complicated route hierarchy um, as, as you want to do. I mean, it's up to you. So it's a very powerful tool. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at how this works now. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to refresh. And we have game sidebar and game. If I go ahead and inspect these, you'll see that the um, that the game sidebar gets included into the div class sidebar, just like we got before. But if I put in, let's say, an invalid route and get redirected to the index, notice how it says lobby sidebar, lobby. So let's go back into a game. And uh, we can go into React, and we can look at inside of game sidebar, we can see its params, game ID two. We can see its route. It's matching the game ID game, uh, the game game ID route, as well as the router, and then also the different routes internal to it. So yeah, that's really about it. Like I said, we are going to be delving in a little bit more into the internals of React, not the internals, but the API surface of React Router later and see how we can control it. But for now, this will do. So we already have the skeleton of the application going. There's really not a whole lot else to say about React Router. If you want to find something out about it, check the documentation, search Google, search Stack Overflow. It's a very popular package. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next video.